Hey there, welcome today. We are so glad that you chose to join us. Brody, it's great to be with you again it's today. good to see you, Joe. Hey, I was on the Mill Run Facebook page, yeah. and I saw something very exciting about you. Yeah, it was just announced yesterday that uh, the city of Hilliard uh, has started a chaplain's program, and myself and another pastor in Hilliard are going to be serving as the first chaplains of the Hilliard yeah, Police awesome. Department, and then we are also going to be serving as chaplains for the Norwich Township Fire Department. Congratulations. What now, a great opportunity. That's awesome. You're a, you're a chaplain too, Joe. I am. So um, I'm a chaplain for Upper Arlington Fire Department, and uh, Carl Schweitzel is Another a member chaplain of our church. Right, for the Upper Arlington Police Department. That is correct. So really there's, opportunities there's for There's chaplains us everywhere. I tell you. <laughs> Anything else that we... Oh, uh, a couple things that, that we need to know. Yeah. So let me tell the first one. Yeah, you got it. We have a congregational meeting coming this Sunday. It is on Zoom and it'll meet at noon. If you would uh, like to join the congregational meeting, you just go to ualc.org slash council. Is there gonna be a light lunch? Uh, yes, just send Joe your order and he'll <laughs> yeah. run it over your house. That's right, provide your own light lunch. Hey, there, on uh, October 2nd, it's a Friday night, we're gonna have a evening of teaching and prayer as we enter into this political season. And it's how do we really reconcile the gospel of Jesus as, as followers of Jesus and this political season. Yeah. And so I think there's something for us to say and do. And so a, an opportunity for us to have a conversation together. It's going to be live. We'll be at Mill Run outside. So bring a chair, a blanket, um, maybe even a warm coat, uh, depending on the weather. It yeah. should be an opportunity to be great. And speaking of warm weather. And speaking of time and, and different October dates, October 4th, it's a Sunday. We are changing the worship time for our modern worship service. And so not only will the live service change to 10 o'clock, but we will stream it live at 10 o'clock as well. Now the traditional service will remain the same. It'll still be Thursday at seven and streamed at nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday. But for, uh, for those of you who would like to come early and watch us warm up, you're still welcome to come at 9. But the modern service will be at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Yeah, it should be a little October bit... October 4th. It should be a little bit warmer at And a little bit lighter. <laughs> and a little bit more light outside. <laughs> hey, something else that's happening in our church uh, that we want to make you aware of. Um, some of you know that in this uh, new pandemic season, our students from all over Columbus and the suburbs have had to do school in an all-new way. One of the needs that was recognized very early on is that some of our students lack a safe place to do their homework and schoolwork and need a place where they can get reliable internet. Mm. There are churches all over the Columbus area that are trying to meet this need. And so our Mill Run campus is going to be the site of one of the learning enrichment centers, the LEC. This is a partnership that we're gonna do with Sun Ministries, and we are going to open our building uh, for students. We hope to help 180 students in the Hilliard area uh, with a safe place to do their work and reliable internet. Now, our people can be involved in this uh, through one of two ways. One, Sun Ministries is hiring staff to help run this program. Also, we need volunteers that will help. And so if either of those sound interesting to you, you can go to ualc.org slash LEC to learn more information about how you can get involved. What a great opportunity. As a former youth minister, to have somebody come to us and say, we're going to bring students to your building. What an opportunity. It's a great opportunity. It's something else you need to know, and it's going to feel a little early, but All Saints Day is November 1st, and it's actually a Sunday, and we're going to celebrate that as a church like we typically do with the reading of names of people who have passed on. And so you have an opportunity to fill out a form with names of people who mean something to you that you want us to remember. And we're going to come up with a creative way to celebrate that this, this year um, together in a way that makes sense in this environment. But we need you to put your names, the people who mean something to you, on those forms and get them back to us. The last date that we'll be accepting names is October 15th. And then um, pay attention to the website and different announcements as far as how we will celebrate that. But we will... Uh, make sure that we do that well. UALC.org slash worship. Worship. All right. Well, speaking of worship, let's yeah. spend some time doing that. So would you pray with me? Father, we give you thanks that we can gather as your people to worship you. Mm -hmm. And so we pray, Lord, that you would be our guest 
and everything that is said and sung, given and received, we pray that all of it blesses you. Receive our worship, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll see you in worship. Let's go. Welcome to worship. Whether you're joining us here in the room or joining us online, it is so good to be together as God's people in God's presence. Our God has made us a family. He has drawn us together into this time and space, into his very presence, to hear the good news of his word and to praise and magnify his name. My name is Aaron. It's my joy to be with you. And I heard from someone as you were walking in, Hey, have you been on vacation for like two months? Where have you been? You went missing. Uh, if you've been looking around, I was tucked back in the production booth, uh, hiding from you for a couple of weeks, just making sure everything was running smoothly. But it is so nice to be back up here and worshiping with you. Thank you for giving me this privilege. Thank you for being here, whether in person or online. And as we come into God's presence, we are always reminded that we can only come boldly before the throne of God because of his work through our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is because of his finished work on the cross and through the resurrection that we can come into this space, that we can come before our God to bring our praise. And so we begin our time of worship with confession. We begin this time hearing again the words of absolution. And so we begin this service in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scriptures tell us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we will confess our sins, then God is steadfast and faithful to forgive. So I would invite you to take a posture of prayer. If you would like to use the kneelers in front of you here in the room, if you would even like to kneel as you participate with this at home. And let's take a moment of silence before the Lord as we pray. Most merciful God, we confess that without Christ, we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. In his mercy, Almighty God, or the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the procession. Please be seated. Our hymn of praise for today is called Sing Praise to God, the Highest Good. It was written in 1675 by a German layperson named Johann Jacob Schutz. This hymn first appeared in his 1675 tract, A Small Book of Christian Encouragement. It's generally agreed that one of the most memorable things about this hymn is the lovely grand refrain, To God All Praise and Glory. The regular repetition of this phrase helps the singer or listener remember all the, uh, that all praise and glory belong to God. He is indeed the highest good. This hymn extends an invitation to praise God, followed by the announcement of his perfect character and his marvelous works. The final stanza calls the entire confessing church to glorify God and to proclaim aloud the wondrous story of Christ. To God, all praise and glory. For those here in the sanctuary, I would invite you to sing boldly in your hearts. For those joining online, I would invite you to sing boldly in your homes. And let us worship God together.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive from you whatever you appear, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Bible lesson for the day is written in the 15th chapter of Genesis, beginning with the first verse. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Becky. about that. So my name is Joe Valentino and it truly is a privilege to be with you today. What a great passage. A passage when I first read it through preparing for today made me think of uh, Peggy and my and our adventure of trying to have kids. Most of you know that I have two kids. Both of them are adopted. Uh, my son Josh who is 30 and then who's with me most of the time and then um, I have a daughter who is 27, and, um, and, and both of those kids are a gift that God has given us. You see, we struggled to have kids. We were not able to have kids um, when we were first married, and uh, ever at, at this point. But we believed that God had something in store for us. We both were in youth ministry, and we both loved family, we loved kids, and we believed that it was supposed to be that way. And so, we went through a period of time where we were trying to have kids and everybody around us was so encouraging and had all this advice and would make promises to us. If you would just wear the right underwear, we promise you'll have kids. If, if you eat the right foods or not eat the wrong foods, we promise you'll have kids. If, um, if you take a hot bath, if you, I mean, on and on, I mean, everything but stand on one foot and hold your finger up in the air. We promise you'll have kids. And what we discovered is, unless you have the authority and the power, any promise you make really doesn't matter a whole lot. And so the question that kind of burns in me as I read this passage is, who's making promises that I believe? And as we are in an environment right now where people are making all kinds of promises, I have to ask the question of, who do you believe and why do you believe them? Do they have the authority? Do they actually have the power to do the things that they are promising to do? Whether it be the medical people with COVID or whether it be the political scene, promises are out there every single day. And the question I have to ask, who do you believe? Why do you believe them? Do they have the authority and the actual power to come through with the promises that they're making? I'll leave that up to you and your discretion. But for me and my household, we know that our Lord Jesus Christ has the power to keep the promises that he made. He has the authority to keep the promises that he made. And he is our Lord and our God. And when he makes a promise, he is unchangeable and he never forgets those promises. But you need to know some of the context of the scripture that was read today. And so he starts off and it says that Abraham, Abram was, um, 
after this, the word came to the Lord. Well, what is after this? What is this that happened that it was after this? Well, what the, this was, was a time where Abram had gone in and conquered two kings and re- recovered Sodom and Gomorrah and recovered his nephew Lot, who lived in Sodom. And so with his ragtag bunch of men, he went and he was successful in taking back what was taken away from Sodom and Gomorrah and from his nephew Lot, and then restored them. And so I'm sure he had fear that maybe these kings would come back on him or something terrible was going to happen to him and his family as they went further. But then in a vision, he has this, this, this vision from God. It says, Abram, don't be afraid. I am your shield. Your very great reward. Wouldn't it be great if God gave you that promise? I am your shield. Don't be afraid. And there'll be a great promise that will come. I will make a great nation from you. And this isn't the first time that Abram has heard this from God. We go, this is in chapter 15, and we go back to chapter 12. We hear God set the stage as he comes to Abram, and he tells him that he wants him to go to a place, a place that he's yet to be told, but to go, to just get up and go, and that God would lead him, and that he would protect him, and that he would bless them, and he would be made a great nation. It's, it's interesting to me that in this process where God says to Abram, don't be afraid. I'll be your protector. I will make sure that things are good for you. In fact, I'm going to bless you in a way that it's going to be amazing. That a- Abram believed it, but then he asks God this very probing question. But Abram said, sovereign Lord. So he understood who he was talking to. Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. In other words, you've given me all of these things and you're promising to give me even more. But why would you give me all of those things when I have not even an heir to give them to but my slave? You're going to grant me all of my wishes, everything that I would ever desire, and you're going to protect me. And all that I have is going to go to my slaves? And God says, no, no, no. Wait, watch. And he takes him outside. You can feel the relationship God has with Abram. There's this sense of closeness. There's this sense of of, uh, this father-son relationship that that God the Father has with Abram. And he takes him outside and he says, look at the sky. If it's possible, I want you to count the stars almost tongue-in-cheek because there are so many stars that there's no way he can count the stars. And he says, count the stars if you can. Count them. This is how many heirs that you will have. This is who your descendants will be. And I love Abram's response. This is, I'm going to read it to you so that you get, I get it right and you really hear what it says. Verse 6 says this, Abram believed the Lord, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Abram believed. Now, you need to understand the condition that Abram was in. At this point in time, Abram is 75 years old. So, let me ask the question. Any men here 75 or older? His wife, Sarah, was 65. Any women 65? Don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to ask. It's not polite to ask a woman their age. But what I get from this passage is that, okay, those of you who are 75 and 65, guess what? You can have kids. Oh, I don't know if that's good news or not. I also notice that now Abram, maybe, I don't know, I'm going to read into it, that now Abram has legitimate reason to go into Sarah and say, okay, God said, I think we need to act on God's promises. I'll let that just sink in a minute, and eventually it'll catch up with you. But Abram believed. He believed in what God said, even though he knew the physical condition that he was in, even though he knew that this was not likely or even possible, even though he knew as he looked at his wife that this was, this was nuts, and he believed. What do you believe? What do you believe, and why do you believe it? Better question is, Who do you believe, 
And why do you believe him? Abram knew that this God that he was talking with, this God he had a relationship with, was all powerful and could do literally anything. And so he believed, and then it uses almost a banking term here. Abram believed, and it was credited to him righteousness. Abram invested in belief, invested in faith, invested in God, and it was credited to his account that he was right with God. Righteous. How's your faith? In this time of COVID, as we kind of struggle with how do we do church, how do we serve each other, how do we come together, how do we, how do, we do small groups, how do we actually do the things that we do as church? So many people are afraid, and with good reason. It's, the disease is real, and it has all kinds of effects. But who do we believe? Do we believe in the God Almighty, the one who created heaven and earth? Do we believe that he could do anything? Do you understand that this is not a surprise to him? He understands that this is happening, and yet he can deal with it in any way he chooses. And I, I strongly believe that the, one of the most loving things we could do is wear a mask so we protect each other and to keep distance from each other so that we don't affect each other. But the core belief that God can handle anything and that God is in charge still must be a part of who we are and what we believe. Who do you believe? What do you believe? Every time I go outside now and I look up at the stars and I see all of those stars, I think I'm one of those stars. As Abram stood there and looked at the stars and God said, count them. That will be all of your descendants. Do you realize that you are part of the descendants of Abraham? Because of our relationship with Jesus Christ, we've been adopted in to be children of Abraham. And so as he looked at the stars, he saw you and he saw me and he saw Jesus. Jesus was a descendant of Abraham, one of those bright stars that Abram looked at. A way that God would use to connect all of us to him and to fulfill the promise that he had made. You can have a relationship with God Almighty. You can trust him and believe in him, just like Abram. And it's not about what you do, it's what you believe. Abram, there was no law for him to follow. There was nothing that he had to do to become a follower of God. Just believe. And as he believed, he walked in the ways of God. He had it in the right order. He believed what God said, and so he went. He believed in what God said, and so he had offspring. He believed in what God said, and so God showed him all of the stars and counted us as part of his offspring. What do you believe? Abram was a wayfinder for us, showing us the way of how do we actually act on what God says. Believe in what he said. I'll finish with this. It's interesting in Hebrews chapter 11, starting with verse 8. By faith, Abraham, and later God renames Abram to Abraham. By faith, when called to go to a place that he would later receive his own inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, by what he believed, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in the foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were his heirs with him in the same promise. By faith, we can walk in the promise that God has given to Abraham, that we can be in relationship with God himself, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. By faith, we can walk in the ways of God and have a relationship with him. Let me pray. Father God, I do thank you that you are the giver of faith. I thank you that you call us to believe you and that you make promises and you keep your promises. I thank you for the example of Abram. And I ask, Father, that you would send your spirit to encourage us, to draw us to you, 
and that we might believe you at your word. Father, I thank you that you count us as your children by faith. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray these things. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. From around the world and throughout history, people have proclaimed that they were followers of Jesus with the Apostles' Creed. And so if you would join me as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. If you now want to greet one another, you can turn 360 if you're in the building and say hi to each other. Those of you at home, if you would pick up your phones and maybe text somebody who you care about and you want to touch base with, the peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you.
All right, if you want to adopt a posture of prayer, we are going to do the prayers of the people. And whether you're worshiping with us here in the sanctuary or online, if you would like to kneel, you're welcome to do that. Use the kneelers and the pews in front of you. These are our prayers together, and so let us make them our prayers. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you can respond with, hear our prayer. Let us go before the Lord with our prayers now. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our friends who need healing. And so we pray for Marv Fritz in the hospital, and we pray for those recovering at home, Dave DeWeese and Ted Schindler. We continue to pray for our friends who have ongoing health needs for Martha Bennett, Stephen Blodgett, Margaret Bostwick, Louis Brower, Jan Brewer, Carol Cross, Lou Doolin, Nancy Hess, Linda Paparotis, and Tim Robison. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for other churches that you might work through the congregations and their leaders to accomplish your will on earth. This week, we pray for Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, for Meadow Park Church, for Overbrook Presbyterian Church, and St. Timothy Catholic Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things we pray, believing in your goodness and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the Lord's table. We believe that communion is what Jesus said it is. It is his real presence, and it is the forgiveness of sins. So anybody who desires Jesus' presence and his forgiveness is welcome at this table. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus says, Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. If you're worshiping with us at home, I hope that you'll get your elements together now. And if you are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary, you can take your cup. You can remove that first clear layer. And as you take the bread or as you take the wafer, the body of Christ given for you. Go ahead and remove the second And as you take the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now as we meditate on these benefits of Christ, we will have our special music.
Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Some instructions as we conclude our worship service. First of all, on your way out, you will notice there's a basket for your offering. If you're worshiping with us online, I want to encourage you to look for that button in the chat feature where you can use our app to give your gift online. Uh, For those of you that are here, please leave the clipboards on uh, the benches uh, and take your communion cups. There's a basket that you can dispose of those on the way out. If you're worshiping with us online, I want to encourage you to join our online lobby right after this service. If you have not worshiped with us here in person, I want to encourage you to do that. We still have plenty of space. Uh, Each Monday, you can go online and register your attendance at ualc.org slash worship. After the processional, if you would please be seated, our ushers will release us by rows. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.